Good evening and welcome to the Passionate Professional Series. My name is Tunde Kukoyi and I'll be the host of today's episode. The Passionate Professional Series is an offshoot of the Pub, which is a channel on YouTube that shares useful knowledge to help you maximize your passions and your purpose so you do not just enjoy success but also fulfillment in your personal and your place. Now the aim of the Passionate Professional Series is to bring you close to professionals who are not just defining themselves by their titles, but they're actually living out their passions and by so doing their rich potential. It is closer to these professionals, they will rely on you, and you can also see that if they can do it, that means that you can also do it. And I hope that this aim is perfect. Now, the passion professional series is not just the conversation between myself and the guest who's already in the studio. It's um, supposed to be an interactive, um, session in which we get your questions, your feedback um, as well, because if, if it's for you, then I mean, we're not, I didn't, if we're not able to add much value to you, then the whole aim of the, of the um, recordings is um, are missed. So I would like it as much as possible if um, you can, can put your comments, your feedback in the comments. You can also ask questions. I think of these sessions are, as like mini mentoring sessions because we bring very important people to the platform and we're able to actually ask them questions one and that's the whole beauty of the series our guest for today is a very special person and she's already in the studio backsta backstage but before i bring her up as always i always like to start with um, which is like my own interview to you and the question for today is this how valuable are you i mean how valuable are you to the marketplace i know you think of you in the sense that uh, it's my self-worth and obviously we tell everyone to say yes I'm, I'm i'm valuable of course everyone is valuable but i mean if you looked in the eyes of your organization or um, your workplace how valuable would they say you are to the organization another way i like to think of this question is how much have you invested in yourself one of the greatest investors i mean in terms of financial investors um was asked the question that we're investing i'm talking about warren buffett and he said that the best thing to invest in, invest in yourself. So the question is, is how, when was the last time that you actually invested in yourself? Because if you invest in yourself, you're yourself, but you're more valuable to the people who is that can invest in yourself. Um, and the first one is investing in your knowledge. And that means by reading books, by attending seminars, going to workshops, not just in um, your personal development, but also in your career line as well. The second thing I'll talk about is by adding skills to yourself. We live in a skill-based economy um, today. Before, in the, in the, in the past, um, the economy was more about oh, uh, just manual like working in the factory line. But today, you can see that all, most of the jobs of today are kind of skill-based. So you can always, always, always school. You have to learn and unlearn. So learning things, leadership, um, people management, time management, projects management, communication is a skill that is very underrated. These are things that are actually more valuable to yourself and your organization. And the last thing I want to talk about is your networks. You have to invest in your network. Some people say, what is your network? So do not just sit in the in the box or sit in the bubble in your organizations. Go to that's where you meet people. And the more you meet people, the more you, you you are like linked to people that have what you want. So the three things I just want to remind you in are investing in your knowledge, investing in your skills, and investing in your knowledge. We're just going to, I'm going to in, um, invite the guest for today to the stage and um uh, I'm of technical issues from this so if I can but if not I'll just go around and bring bring her up um oh. Okay, uh, 
I will go ahead and stay. Morani Kajai is a director on a multiple award winning career professional. She's a chartered actor and she is a TV presenter. She is the founder of Career Nugget, which is a social aspiring to advance in the workplace via workshops, seminar, and also a churches housing association. In 2022, just last year, she was awarded um, Black and Minority Positive Decisions that will influence our community. Um, she's also passionate about the youth like the individuals to ensure that the next generation are adequately equipped for career ex excellence and progression. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, um, a round of applause as we welcome to the virtual stage, uh, Mrs. Moran Ajayi. Good evening, Mrs. Ajayi. Can you hear me? I can. Thank you so much, Tunde. Good evening. And um, I want to make sure, is am I clear? Because earlier on the line was breaking, so I'm not sure whether it's my end or your end. I hope the connection is, is clear. Yeah, I can hear you clearly um, and I can see you clearly. Okay. Um, okay. I'm not sure, I've not received any comments, so I don't know if um, people watching All right. can as well. Well, we'll just get started anyway. Mm -hmm. Good so day, uh, many thanks for honoring the, many thanks for honoring the invitation. Um, I know you have a really busy schedule and um, yeah, You're I'll just welcome. say thank you, thank you, thank you for making out time. So um, I've read out your bio, which is very impressive, um, but I always like um, I always like the real story behind the bio, because um, bio is, um, if if we're sitting, like if you're talking to, or if I met your daughter or your son, um, if I met your son rather, um, what, what, what would your son say about you in terms of your story? I always like to hear the background. Who is the real Mrs. Moradika Ajayi? In any way, just tell us some interesting things about yourself. Um, okay, so Moradika Ajayi is me. Uh, my son would say I'm very playful. Um, I like having fun. Um, I like wrestling with him and doing things like that. But most seriously, I was born in Wales. So the first 10 years of my life were in the UK in Wales. And then when I was almost 10, I went back to Nigeria, um, not to a place that looked like Wales. So my childhood was a bit traumatic because of the changing environment. I went to a place where basic amenities were not just freely available, um, which meant sometimes I'd have to fetch water. So this is talking about going back to Nigeria, putting a, a pail of water on my head, um, being very timid, shy, very conscious of my environment, worried whether I'll be accepted, whether I'll be able to fit in. I grew up with so many insecurities, but I've come a long way. I'm now over five decades. You know, I've got five over five decades of experience living in this earth. And over the time I've invested in myself. So I listened to when you're talking about value. So I definitely invested a lot in developing myself because I didn't really flourish per se in my academics because of all the baggages of insecurity and things that I was carrying, it meant that I was too conscious to really take the right move. Um, so I wouldn't speak up. I was very quiet, very timid. I went to a boarding school and funny enough, um, 
a lot of my colleagues don't remember me, even with everything I do. Some of them are still worried. Is that the same Morenica we were in school with? But over the years, I have invested in myself. So I've got several qualifications. Um, initially, my first degree was in computer science. So I started off as a computer programmer. Um, and that required constant development. The program languages were changing. So I quickly switched off to something that was more steady. So now I'm a chartered accountant and I don't need to do so much intensive studying. Yes, I still need to keep abreast of what's happening in my industry. So I do that, but it's more about going to seminars. I, you know, I did go back for an MBA and things like that. So I've invested in myself, not just by formal education, but I do listen to loads of other speakers on YouTube. I attend seminars. Um, I am a stickler for developing oneself and moving with the times so that one is not caught out and left behind. Um, so that's me in terms of, um, so I work, I work in the, um, within social housing. So very passionate about my community. So I work in the area where I can give back to my community. I am a director of corporate services, which means um, I wear several hats. I'm responsible for the finances of my organization. I'm res responsible for the human resources element, the IT, information technology element, governance and risk. So I, I wear that hat for my organization as a director of corporate services. In my, when I switch off from work, so I'm very disciplined, I cut off from work. Um, mm -hmm. And I've had to develop that over the years. Uh, prior to that, I would work silly hours, but I realized that there's life after work. I got to get the, not balance, but juggle the balls right. So I'm very passionate about seeing members of my community, the black community flourish in, in, their, in their, whatever they choose to do, which I call their career. It could be in your business or in a paid employment, but I, I don't want people to feel lonely um, I want people to know that there's a support network out there that can really empower you, enrich you, educate you, to enable you to advance in whatever you choose to do. I work with a bank of several mentors, and my social enterprise is called Career Nuggets. So I can talk about that forever if you don't stop me. But that's a path I believe that um, the success in our living is not about you just telling your story, but it's how many other lives you can impact. Or that you, you, when you move, you must throw the ladder down for somebody else. Whatever learning I learn, I pass on to somebody else. So that's a bit about me. Um, I love animals. I love traveling. I love music. I love dancing. I love fun. And I like hard work. So that's a bit about me. <laughs> well, that's like, you've kind of like gone through the entire entire <laughs> um, interview questions. I will, we'll, we'll go more in depth anyway. But I, I like the way you just touched on everything and. It seems like you. It's not something that um, you haven't thought about before. It's not something that you haven't come across before. It's something that you you know because you, you you like you said you have five decades of experience. So it's something that you've been living every day, and you've just kind of like opened the can. And you know when you open the can, when you just shake it, and everything the gas just comes up. That's just the gas that's come up. But thank you so much. Thank you for that. Um, the question is, I mean, I'm just thinking. I mean, computer science, and then you went into. Um, finance or accounting i mean um first how did you make that switch and do you think that that has in any way um impacted your career progression in terms of like having some experience in computer science or programming and now doing accounting i'm just wondering do you think that is as related to where you are today in any way so in my career journey i've used both and as you know any career any profession you're in technology underpins it so whatever I've learned in my computer science degree still carries on. But most importantly, for me to be able to deliver in my roles, like earlier on, I did tell you that in as much as I'm an accountant, I have other hats I wear, which one of them is IT. So with the knowledge I have, I'm able to support my organization better. And prior to my current role, I was the head of finance IT for Transport for London, which is all the transport within London. So I've always had that hat of IT under my bonnet, so to say. So it's not it's not um, stopped me in any shape or form. It's always enhanced me. The only thing was when I start when I made the switch, monetary terms, I took a drop because I was very intentional about it. As a programmer, I was earning well. I mean, I only did programming for two years, so not so long. But I knew that that wasn't sustainable for me, and so many things were happening and. I also am a woman of faith, so I know not everybody will be there, but I am a Christian, and I go how I'm led. 
So what had happened was I needed to retrain as an accountant, which means whatever money I'm going to command will not be the same as me working already as a programmer. But I was willing to make that sacrifice because I knew where I was going. I always had my eye on directorship. So going back was only a temporary step back for me to change lanes. And also I was looking for a specific role, which you call a graduate trainee role. It took me nine months to get it. But the reason why I waited for it was because um, when you're studying as an accountant, they put you on a program, which means as you're passing each stage, you get the relevant experience and you get promoted. And I wanted that because over three years, it meant I got all the valuable experience I needed in my accounting profession. And from then, the sky was the limit. Like I said, I'm a very focused, a very diligent, very, very determined individual. So where I am, I don't think I could have, even if I was a programmer, I'd probably be the same level. I don't think I've lost out in any shape or form. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, um, that's really remarkable. And I think the lesson I'm just drawing from that is wherever you are today, whatever you're doing, um, just be your best at it because it will always be useful your journey along the line because life is a journey, success is a journey. It's, it's not just about a destination. So um, sometimes we find ourselves doing things that we might feel that they are not entirely what we hoped or dreamed for or not, not the exact destination that we, we were looking, looking at for. The fact that we're doing something at the moment, it might actually come in useful um, when, when, when we get to that destination. And just like you said, your computer science background has helped you even in your role as director of um, corporate services. Um, really interesting introduction um, and uh, congratulations on all you've had. And I know that there's more, I'm sure you're not, you're not resting on your laurels. I'm sure there's more in stock for you. Um, you. Question I want to ask again is what, what are your values? Um, you've, you've kind of like spilled some of the things while you're talking, uh, but I want you to kind of like hone in and tell us what are some of the values, that your non-negotiables, things that you work and live by? Um, yes, I've touched on them already, but um, one key thing to me is integrity. Um, one's character must be, clear, you know, as much as we, I know we're all human, but I, I live, I believe in being truthful, even if the message is painful. I'm very blunt, I'm very direct, but integrity is very key for me. Um, empowering others is another um, value for me. I, I don't want to be the only champion in the room. I want to be surrounded by champions. So I believe in sharing caring and raising other people up with me. Together we move forward. Um, when I started out, I realized that I'm so passionate about that, but not everybody wants to move at the same pace. So my next value is respect. I respect people. You don't have to, to move at the pace I'm moving. Um, so respect, I respect people's values, people's religion, people who they, who they stand for. And that is something um, I, I believe in. And I guess um, the last, um, value for me is being accessible. Accessibility is key. I want people to be able to reach others and reach me, reach anybody, no matter the titles. Um, I just want the world to be a better place and more accessible to all. So those are more values. Thank you. Yeah, I like that. Um, integrity, empowering others, respect and um, accessibility. And I can attest to that because um, I remember when I was going to invite you for the show, it was just more like I reached on social media and you responded, I was like, oh, that's strange. Um, <laughs> then be just responding to my message that we had. And so you're like, yeah, you can reach me on this number. And then I called you and you're like, yeah, I'll do it. So yeah, um, many people do not know that um, it's it, people actually look, look at you and then they try to look at are you accessible because sometimes when some people get up there um, they become less less accessible and some people say that it's very lonely at the top and someone said that yeah, it's only lonely at the, at the top if you go there alone um, and just like you said you empower others you don't want to just stay at the top alone you want to bring other people um, at the, to the top with you especially black and um, Asian black and minority ethnic group um, women um, who are largely under underrepresented I'm sure in the um, in the senior um, levels of management so and, men. For all and, that men. You do. and men and men as well yeah yeah <laughs> i agree i agree yeah and um I'm, I'm sure we'll talk about career nuggets in a bit and I, I know i've seen a couple of your videos and things and i've seen men um, showing up there so it's definitely not just for the women as well um yeah so interesting and it's, it's a good thing that you you, um, you also mentioned integrity uh, because integrity is something that we should all have um, as values whether we um, it should be a non-negotiable for all of us. Um, I think someone said that 
even if everybody leaves, even all your friends leave, your integrity should never leave you. And um, integrity is also about not just speaking your values, but also living out your values, which is something that you do. Um, and that's why you're one of the passionate professionals on this um, series. Um, so tell us some of the things that you are passionate about, please, if you don't mind. Um, well, like I said, love empowering people. Yeah. I love having fun. Um, I like traveling, discovering. So when I travel, um, not necessarily, I love exotic holidays, but there's got to be a bit of the culture. I love learning other people's culture. And um, I like going, being a bit daring. So um, when I'm in an, a, an environment, I want to be able to connect with people there, irrespective of where they're from. Um, so I, I build, my, my passion hangs around that, discovering things that are new. Um, so this one you probably would laugh about, but it's a fact. One of the days I was, um, what's it called? I was working in a company called um, PricewaterhouseCoopers, dominated with uh, a lot of Caucasian men. And I remember one day I was going into the boardroom and all of them were men. And, and I said hello and none of them made eye contact. I, I seemed to be like, they just didn't acknowledge me in the room. And I felt a bit small. Um, even though I'd done the work to present it, my partner presented the work. So I got home and I thought, what is it that men like? There's something that my my husband does in the house. He's watching and he's going, whoo ha, whoo ha. So I ventured into the world of football. And I said, I you know, know you, need to teach me, you need to teach me about this football. And when I develop a passion about something, I throw my whole self into it. So it wasn't just about watching it on the TV. I actually am a Chelsea supporter. The men in blue, I support them. I go to Stamford Bridge. I mm -hmm. go there and come back losing my voice. So when I'm when I throw myself in anything, I really love to just embrace it, enjoy soaking the whole atmosphere. So football is a passion of mine. And wow. the next time I was uh, privileged to go into this room over all men, I remember then it was is a long time ago. It was when Chelsea was playing in the FA Cup against Middlesbrough and Chelsea won. So mm -hmm. I came into the room that day and I'm like, did anybody watch the mat? The boys have been won. And guess what? The men that ignored me previously, all their eyes were on me. Now I was one of them. All struck a conversation. So yes, I'm passionate about just knowing about other people's interests, cultures, and I would mm -hmm. adjust accordingly. So that's a bit about me. <laughs> Well, that's that's interesting, and there's also a lesson to learn from that. In the sense that, I mean, um, you need to learn how to speak other people's languages. It's not just that people are ignoring you, but people are people actually are. I mean, if you to 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 speak someone's language, you need to find out what they're interested in. I mean, most people are I'll put in quotes selfish. They are they are all about their interests. So if you if you are interested in what they are interested in, you automatically light up that spark, and you kind of like you just become like buddies and that's where the relationship starts from. So I think it was a bold move for you um, to venture into football, but um, I'm sure now, I mean, you find it very easy to connect to people because it's, it's not just about communication, but also connecting with people. Um, and that is great. Um, I'm just going to move on um, to the next question. So I don't, because um, I know our time is very precious and I still have a lot to learn from you. Um, so, so, so can you tell us some, about some of your um, most productive habits? Oh, so I'm a very, um, yeah, I'm intentional, but I can also be impulsive um, in certain areas, So, which means I can adapt anyhow. So maybe one of my habits is um, I always tell myself that I need to add something new to my CV every six months, something new. So um, it means that I'm constantly looking for something new that I've learned in the workplace or something new that can be added onto the CV and something that I can remove because by achieving this, inherently I've achieved others. So that's one. Um, the other thing is I'm also looking, to, I, I'm a connector. So I network um, and I go somewhere and I'm at an event at the moment. I'm here to receive an award and oh, I- Congratulations. Thank you. So I am, but I'm passionate about things like this. So I came out and thought, yes, you know, um, well, as on the table is a table of 10. I've already connected with six people on that table. I have their numbers. That's just me. So, uh -huh. and but this, like I said earlier on, I am a very, you know, I was, I won't use that now. I was very shy, timid, um, insecure, and all those sort of things. I intentionally dealt with each one of those things, which enables me to be able to network. Because in your talk earlier on, when you were introducing the session, 
you can't really walk that road alone if you want to really impact and empower people. There's so many dreams that I've had. And the only reason why I've been able to realize them is because I've worked with other people. So I, I value connections, valuable connections. And I do not, I can connect with anybody, whether they're senior to me or underneath me, everybody has a value they can bring to the table. So that's one of my productive habits, networking, um, developing myself. And then also I relax. So the traveling is always baked into my calendar and I haven't let go of my computer. So I play a lot of computer games with my son, although he plays something else where I have my own games, but that's another way I relax. I play a lot of computer games. I need to have it. I really get into it. I don't, I don't want to lose. So that's the competitive edge of me. <laughs> <laughs> so I play computer games. And I'm, I wouldn't say I'm a reader. I, I'm not into reading books, but I do listen. If there's an audio book that I can really listen to, I would do that on mm -hmm. the move, listen to other people, learn from others. I'm always seeing something that I can learn from, and I love nature. So, mm. yes. Yeah. Talking about learning or um, listening, I think you did mention that you also watch a lot of um, YouTube videos. You mentioned um, that you listen to a lot of audio books. And um, I've also read your uh, one of your books, um, Karen Nuggets, one of the Karen Nuggets book, um, The Undeniable Secrets. And then you had a lot of quotes in there as, as well. I've got it right here with you. Know? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, so, so I, I just want to know, like, who are some of the... Um, who are some of the people you love listening to the most? Uh, the most, or who are some of the people that have, um, inspired you? Or who would you go to when you want to learn something new online or a book or something like that? Who are some of your favorite authors or speakers? So I'm not necessarily. I I, I would say I have a favorite. So yeah. my biggest person I look up to was my late late mother. She's late. She's died, and after that is my husband. So. You know, I can sit down and learn from him at so Kindercom. He's a good teacher of the word. Like I said, I'm a Christian. I love that. Yeah. And then I follow a few Christian um, preachers like Joel Austin and things like that. I would watch several. I love listening to TED Talks. They're not too long. So I would listen to a few of those. I, I, I watch a lot of those. I wouldn't say I follow a particular person per se, yeah. but it's been on the topic. So I might pick up a topic, like the topic I'm looking into because it's pertinent to my workplace is... Um, ESG. So I'm, I will just do a search and then whatever comes up, I'll just read. I'll pick up a topic. Um, I think last month I was studying a lot on value, uh, valuing oneself, valuing others, what's value, how can you bring value to the table? So I'll just do a yeah. search on value. And whichever one tickles my fancy, I'll pick from here, read a bit of this, read a bit of that. If somebody says this book is good, I'll get it. I might not read it back to back, but I will definitely mm -hmm. scan it, pick a bit here, pick a bit there. I am an accountant. I love numbers, not words. But I do believe in getting <laughs> knowledge that I can't know it all. Um, yeah, so that's how I I, 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 I gain my knowledge. Interested, interested. Uh, so I want to ask about some of your um, biggest or your proudest achievements um, that you want to share with us. I think this is a is, is a bit of a is a challenge. It's, it's a big one for me to. It's difficult for me to respond, and it's one area that I'm mm -hmm. I'm I'm still developing in, whereby I can embrace achievements, um, because I just have goals, and once I've done this, done tick, done dick, I don't necessarily sit back and say, "Wow, you've done that." Um, so maybe one of the proudest would be, mm -hmm. you know, going mm -hmm. to Buckingham Palace and receiving my MBE. Um, somebody considering where I come mm. from, like it was when I went back to Nigeria, raised by a single mom, unfortunately she wasn't there because she, she died over 20 years ago. Um, but just the, remembering where I, where I was, um, the girl that was overlooked a lot in my secondary school years, my university years, um, even when growing up in work and, and different things have happened to me, redundancy. Um, and I just think of that girl and who what she's become. And when I went, when I, I remember when the gates of Buckingham Palace were opening for us to drive through, I just thought, wow, thank you, Jesus, making this up. But this, this, this is such a privilege. This is something that I never dreamed of. But one thing I must say though, when I discovered mm -hmm. myself and I knew my identity, because it, it was a journey, and then I now embrace who I am and I know who I was, I renamed myself. Those close to me, they call me Queen Rennie. So I'd always said, I am a royal princess. 
And then my graduate sister, I'm actually the queen. I am the queen of my life, queen of my home. And I always called myself the queen. And anytime we passed through Buckingham Palace, not because I thought I was going to get an MBE, but I just thought one of the days this gates would open to me and I'll actually go into the castle. Mm -hmm. so I visited most of wow. the castles that are local to me in Kent, but they're not being lived in. So I've gone there and I walked the grounds like a queen. So you can imagine how that day was when I was actually walking through the gates. Then you go yeah. in and then you're mingling, you're walking in the palace. It's just a dream come true. And mm -hmm. I really felt really good in myself. But I really did, you know, just acknowledge all the people that have supported me in the journey. I couldn't have done it alone. Yes, I was representing yeah. the tribe, but it's it's a it, that was I would say being in the palace is definitely one of my biggest and proudest moments. And being with Princess wow. Anne, I really wanted to see. And she knew about me. She had read up about me. It was such a fantastic moment. <laughs> wow. I mean, I, I, I still can't I mean, I can't, I really do. I, I, don't, I don't know what, if I was the one, what would have, what would have done? I mean, it would have felt so surreal. Well, congratulations on that. Um, Thank you so much. And I'm going to, I'm going to follow you up by asking, because I, I think um, it was one of your interviews you had, you mentioned and you mentioned it here today as well that when you were younger um you're so timid and I, I think you had a nickname that was called timidity or something like that yeah yeah um, so funny. how <laughs> yeah so how so how then did you make that transition i mean because there are there are a lot of people that um that's something that is holding them back as well like they feel like they they are not they can't stand in front of people or they feel that they are not worth it they feel they are not confident enough so how then did you make that transition or if i can ask from um, for from a professional perspective, how can we improve our confidence um, in the workplace um, and in life generally? I think the one thing that I did was having a mindset makeover. Um, a lot of the things that held me back was in my mind. Um, a lot of it was the small voices speaking to me that you don't fit in, you don't have a voice, um, you don't look like the successful people out there. Think about where you come from, all these negative experiences from my childhood and from what's been spoken to me and what was around me. So a makeover meant I needed to change that. And the one thing I did was, and like I said, I'm a woman of faith. I am a Christian. I found some scriptures in the Bible. So whatever anybody's faith is, you in your faith book, there will be some positive words that you can embrace. And I also decided to rewrite my own narrative. So where I felt um, she was timid, I would say, no, you're strong, you're bold, you're confident. You are that woman that when you step into that room, your voice will be heard. You are a, you are a contender. And I started speaking to myself, basically. The more I said it, the more I believed in it. I would look, and like I um, shared earlier on, when there's anything that I want to pick on, I will go and research it. So confidence, what is it that makes you confident? So I'm reading things around that. And I don't just read, I would act it. So, so a lot of people say, speak to it. If, if I'm feeling mm -hmm. re re like rejection comes in different faces. I remember when I was working and I was made redundant, but my other colleagues were not. And I'm feeling, oh, I'm not worth it. I probably, it was probably me and trying to blame myself. Then I, then I had to pick myself up and said, I have a choice. I walk on the things I can control and the things I can't control, I ditch. So the organization has made that decision to make me redundant. I can't change it. It's their loss. But what I can change is I know what I have. I know my experiences. I know my skills. I know who I am. I'm resilient. I'm a fighter. I have worked hard. I have these things. I can go back out there and somebody else will pick me up because they find the value that I have to offer. I spoke to myself and that's how I was able to turn around that situation from being redundant to get back into employment. So in terms of being timid and, and having all this narrative previously, I had to change it. And I must say, it doesn't just go away. If you, sometimes I find myself in a situation that is daunting and I have to speak to myself and remind myself, this is who you are. This is who you are. And once I value myself, once I appreciate myself and I know who I am, I'm able to stand tall wherever I am. And if I'm in an environment that really does not fit my own being, I have no qualms removing myself from it. Mm -hmm. I don't want any toxic around me. And I've come to realize that I will not fit in every, in every place and I will not be acceptable 
to everybody. And that's okay. But I need to find the place where I fit in, where I can flourish, where I can be me, my authentic self. So that's it. That's how I walk around the world. <laughs> wow. Uh, I really like that. Um, you talked about mindset makeover, um, talking to yourself, um, which I find very interesting because um, many people do not know that they can actually speak to themselves. We believe a lot of voices that we hear from other, all, from other people or all those small voices in our minds, but we never really um, tell our minds what we want our minds to hear. But just like you said, you kept telling yourself, you kept telling yourself, you kept believing it, and that made a difference in your in your life. Um, I'm just going to ask again, just on following on from that. So. Did you ever have a very challenging or difficult time? I know you mentioned that just just um, a couple of minutes ago that um, there was a time you had made redundancy. But is there any is there any challenging or difficult experience that you would you want to share with us and how you managed to navigate through or the lessons that you learned from it? Um, because we know that when you share this um, when you share this um, challenging times and how you went through them, it actually encourages us or someone else might be going through something similar or like some people say that everyone is either just living a crisis or heading towards a crisis or in the middle of a crisis so some of us might be in the middle of a crisis at the moment or heading towards a crisis and not know it but i mean just some advice um, on how to navigate challenging times will be helpful okay so i i want to talk about so in my career journey i've been made redundant three times now um the one that i want to really talk about was um when i was starting out the job paying really well more or less the job meant everything to me Losing the job at that losing that particular job would mean like I felt like I've lost a big chunk because my life was my job. And I was a good employee. I was loved by my chief information officer, loved by good reviews. And all of a sudden, the senior leadership that I was reporting into that loved me, they all changed. They moved on. A new leadership came in, and for some reason, they didn't see my value. So I fought this and um to know it's uh, you know after nine months so i got a, I, so i stayed i was it i was there but the manager was very very tough and then i had um, a surgical i had an, um, a procedure and it went wrong so basically i had a surgery they forgot cotton wool in me everything just you know so i had septicemia it was a really challenging time but because i was scared of this woman because it was a key old surgery that went wrong i told her i'll be back in the office within a, a few days I, w I went I went into the office and I was shivering, yeah. almost collapsed with this. And she had no mercy. She said, if you cannot do this piece of work, I'm gonna get, I'm going to make you redundant. And before I knew it, my temperature was over 40. I was back in the hospital. I was scared to call her. Once they did the surgery again, I discharged myself just to go back to work because I was scared of her. And having done all that, I was operated on in 10 days, three times. And each time I was sneaking out, and upon all that, she still made me redundant. It was one of my lowest moments because I felt I did everything she wanted. I almost lost my life. Yet, mm -hmm. she didn't see all this commitment. And it was a rough time. Um, but the redundancy then paid me. Um, my package was about 70K. And I thought, and there was nobody I could speak to. Why should this happen to me in the workplace? I feel victimized, nowhere to turn to. Mm -hmm. So what we decided to do was out of that 70,000, we had a very good holiday in the Caribbean. We loved, we spent, really, really pampered ourselves as a family. We spent about 10K of it on ourselves and the remaining 60,000 pounds or what is what I used to start up Career Nuggets. The TV yeah. show, the funding of the TV show, I thought, if this is a problem, at the time in the black community, there was nobody that I could reach out to than being victimized here. That I am, you know, I, I was ascribing for senior management roles. There were so many blockers here and there. Where are the role models? How can I get them? It led me to have my TV show like you're doing now. And a lot of them were yeah. somewhere hidden, but they were happy to come on a TV. That meant I could showcase role models to the world. People can tap into that, get mentoring. While I was doing that, I was developing myself. I was meeting with people that had excelled in their career. Listening to their story was boosting my confidence, was enabling me to say, wow, you mean you went through that? You also had a challenge? This is what you did? I need to rise up. Yes, I might have fallen now, but I'm going to rise up again and go. I want to be that role model. I was in management then, but I then said, you know what? I need to get to the top. 
because when I'm at the yeah. top, people can see that I've gone that. So that was a difficult time, but it's what led to the birth of Korean Nugget, where I can put together a platform, a support hub that can support others. So I was made redundant, got the money, but I didn't want to just spend the money on myself. I thought about what can I do for my community? I don't know when I'm going to meet that, but have that book some again and you know, then on tv national tv it was quite expensive then all the production and all that but it was a worthwhile course um so that's what happened and that i always remember it but it, ma it made the second the two other redundancy easier after gone through that yeah. i knew that if, it, if a redundancy comes it means my time there is just up somebody else needs my body so it doesn't hold me back i just say bring the money i'm off to the next assignment <laughs> Wow, well, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to imagine how that felt. I mean, you you not being well, I mean, I, I work in the hospital, I know what it feels like to have sepsis, just like you, you said you did. And you are still, I mean, putting up yourself for for work, you are still turning up at work and people still do not appreciate that. And it just makes us see that, I mean, um, sometimes we, we try to kind of like, to try to like stay our lives, but we can't really stay our lives. There are some things that will just have to happen in order for something new to be birthed. Yeah, if I can put it that way. I mean, if you are not made redundant at that point, it must have felt, and I, I know at that point it must have felt really painful and things, but there will not have been career nuggets. And without career nuggets, you might not have been able to do some of the other astonishing things that you've done. You might not have been recognized. So we yeah. sometimes just try to kind of like stay our own lives, but we just need to understand that there is, we have like a bigger purpose, um, all of us, and sometimes we just need to, um, I wouldn't say go with the flow, because obviously we shouldn't go with the flow, or just coast, but sometimes there are some things that we just cannot change. We need to have that courage to accept the things that we can change, but the ones that we can change, yes, definitely change them. And um, I'm glad that career nuggets came out of that, and a lot of people have, um, I, I can see from the testimonials in your books or your websites, um, talked about how that has actually helped their own lives um, as well. So the lesson for us is sometimes things happen, um, we can, we do not see the blessing in them or we do not see the reason in them, but we just need to have that mindset that everything happens for a reason and there is a bigger purpose that we are um, called to serve. And that's really interesting. I mean, and I'm going to, if I ever find someone that has been made redundant, I'm going to tell them that story, that um, I'll tell you your story. And that's the, that's the whole essence. Yeah. I will tell them. Thank you. Um, I was going to ask that. So, how did you think about career nuggets? Well, now that I know how you thought about career nuggets, um, or what the process that led you to um, create that social enterprise, um, just tell us a bit more about career nuggets and what do you do on a daily basis, or or if it's annually or monthly. What exactly is career nuggets? How can you join and things like that? Okay, so like I said earlier, no, Karen Nogge was birthed out of my own experience and out of a passion that as a, a member of the Black community, we shouldn't feel left, we shouldn't be carrying on on our journey alone. Um, we can learn just by following people, um, speaking to people, listening to people, different ways. Um, so it started off by having a, a TV show. So I was interviewing different guests and uh, we did that. Um, and it's still on, it's still on Vox Africa. They still air it. I can't remember the times, um, but it's on Vox Africa um, three times a week. Mm -hmm. So I interview different um, professionals. And then the, we started getting a lot of questions and people wanted a physical meetup. So we then have, um, we have seminars. So we have one coming up next month and we've come a long way. When we started, I had to fund everything. But to the glory of God, next month, our seminar is going to be hosted by Bank of America um, so in the city. Wow. So we have that on the 19th of April. Uh, we have another uh, physical one being hosted in September by MASH Global, one of the largest insurance companies. And we run, I run an academy. So the academy is always the first quarter of every year. And these are to empower people with soft skills. Because one of the things I realized when I was trying to progress in my career is when you start out, your technical abilities speak volumes and they get you through the door. Your technical know-how gets you through the door. But when you want to then progress and move into senior leadership, then you realize that they kind of diminish in nature because your team carry the technical ability. You then need soft skills the communication skills, the negotiation skills, the influencing skills. You need those skills more when you're advancing in your career. 
And that's something that I felt as a community we lacked. We placed a lot of value on getting formal education. So we'll have a degree, we'll have a master's degree, we'll keep on learning formally, but these soft skills we're lacking. So our academy, after so much research, it's accredited by the Institute of Leadership and Management. We then put um, seven modules together, which go in depth into each of these things. So that's done. We've completed that. That finished last week. And we use the rest of the year to now mentor. So we had over 40 people that went through the academy this year. So every year we've been running the academy now for about three years. And we have over 40 people. But we use the rest of the year to nurture them one-on-ones, make sure, I don't believe in quantity, I believe in quality. So working with those 40 individuals, making sure they're well equipped to the, move to their next level, and then they then become ambassadors and they give back. So that's the way we grow the community. So we make sure that they then um, give back. And then at the end of the year, the first Friday and Saturday of the year, we then have what we call a soiree. And it's a celebration for us. We're all dolled up. We're all dressed up on Saturday to really just celebrate ourselves, celebrate professionals. And it's a lovely forum for people to network. And we normally have about 300 people in the room. Um, so this year is in Croydon. It's the uh, 2nd of December. And the theme this year is, you're hearing it first, kings and queens. Yeah. Yes, we can. So you're hearing it first. Join us. Uh, more information yeah. will be shared. Just follow us on the social media path. So that's what we do. We're all about educating the community, empowering. Um, we're all about inspiration because some people, they, they have everything, but they need somebody to, they just need a nudge or they just need somebody to tell them or they just need to see somebody that has followed a similar pattern to theirs and they get the inspiration and they're up and they're up and they're able to do what they need to achieve. So that's what we do. Wow. Well, I mean, it sounds really, really exciting and something that I would definitely want to be a part of. Um, um, I'm sorry as well. I mean, Kings and Queens, yes, you can. Did I say that? Did, you say, did I say that right? Kings you and Queens, Kings yes, and Queens, can. yes, you can. Yes. Wow. I, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. So, yeah, um, that's really, really exciting. So is it that you, is it just 40 individuals you take every year or is it that oh, no. the other? No, we take, I mean, the year before we had about 56. We take whoever shows an interest. Um, so we open it in December and we close registration um, the second week, third week of January. And then we uh -huh. start, the, the academy starts the last week of January. Um, yeah. And once we start, then it's closed. Because we're all in full-time employment, all the module leads are in full-time employment. We're just volunteering our time because we just want to yeah. develop. We can't do too much. I um, mean, January, in, so when we finish, we've got this physical meetup in April. In July, we have a team getaway. We're going to Alicante. So there's always something happening in September. We have the meeting in March. And then in December, we meet again for the Tsuari. There's no much we can do. Oh, on top of that, every month, as I said, I'm a woman of faith. I believe yeah. in faith and work. So every month we have yeah. a prayer meeting. Um, the last Thursday of every month, we always pray together. So, and that's open to everybody. Our events okay. are open to everybody. The academy is a bit ring fenced, but any other mm -hmm. thing we do is open to everybody. And um, is it just by checking the website then? Um, that, mm -hmm. I think that's brilliant. Is, yeah. is that where you find the, that's where you find information? You find it all on my social media platforms, any of the handles. If it's not on the website yet, because obviously we're volunteers, if it's not on the website, it will be on one of the social media platforms yet. Mm. All right, very exciting. And um, and it's also an opportunity to meet um, mentors, just like you've described. Uh, yes. but I was going to ask you who your mentors were, but I think you'd mentioned that the biggest inspirations um, for you have been your mother and your um, husband. That's but right. I want to ask you an interesting question now, because um, I know you've had- um, I do a have a mentor. Friends. I do have a mentor. She's Mrs. Benedicto Lagunji. Yeah, so right. yeah. Um, and how did you meet her and um, what's your mentoring relationship like? So she's more, she's, she is a confident. So she, I met her at an event. Um, I like the way she, she carried herself. At the time I was going through a lot of insecurity myself and she, the way she carried herself, she looked so confident, the way she delivered, she's a public speaker. She, she just owned her space and I like mm -hmm. that. Um, so I did not approach her. She had spotted me and said, oh, reach out to me. 
And I kept on dodging and she now took my number and said, you must contact me. And, and that's how we started it. We started it like friendship and it's mm -hmm. grown. And so she's somebody that would, um, she's a confident, somebody that will run ideas by. She will give me tips here and there and more from a spiritual um, mentoring, if anything, because um, I always put that first. In terms of professional yeah. mentors, depending on where I am, I'll have a clearly defined goal. And I'll have a mentor for that purpose. So when I was uh, battling my first attempt in um, directorship, I didn't really last, I lo well, not last long, but I was only there for three years, nine months. I know that people will say that's a long one, but, mm -hmm. but I was made redundant and I thought, why? Um, so after that, I got another role, something happened. No, I wasn't made redundant, but something happened. And I thought, what's good? Where am I getting it wrong? So I went out looking for a mentor and the mentor I got, because I felt it was to do with these middle-aged white men and and there was a clash somehow so i looked for a mentor in that space to understand how they were thinking how do i manage my perception about with them how do what do i how do i uh, present myself how do i own my space so i had a mentor then and i only needed him for about four months and that was the end of that so when i go for mentors i'm very int intentional i don't say mentors are my friends per se so I keep it very professional in terms of what I want to get from it. Mm. Um, so that's how I keep my mentoring relationships. And, and on the other side, I mean, because I know you have mentors and you have a lot of mentees as well. I do. Um, can you share, can you share, I mean, you obviously don't have to say names and things, but can you share, so people can actually understand that this works. Um, can you share like a positive mentoring experience on how um, a mentor came and how you were able to help the a mentee rather than how you were able to help the mentee through mentoring? So I'm going to give two examples. The first one was yeah. a lady who was also an accountant, but she was at the very lower end of accounting. And she'd been in that role for nine months. And... Um, I saw a lot of potential. I always, I, I guess that's my gifting. I see potentials in people. Okay. And I said, look, you are lacking on this. The way you speak, the way, you, I can't even hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. You need to slow down your pace. So we, and when that happened, naturally my mentoring instincts went in. I said, you know what, let's formalize this because I need accountability. You need to own this relationship and call me this time every week. And we went through different sessions. And I also then referred her to the academy and today she's a financial controller. She's like four levels above where she was. And this has happened right. in three years. Wow. Now, the other one I want to talk about was a lady I met in a salon. Now, this is about nine years ago. So I've been in this space. Career Nuggets about over seven years, but I've been in this space for a while. I only formalized it um, using the social enterprise. Met her in the salon. She was a cleaner. And um, I invited her to come and clean my house so I can be a blessing to her. That was the whole essence of it. I just said, you only can clean, come and clean my house once a month. That's all I need. I can maintain it the rest. Uh -huh. And I noticed she was very diligent in what she was doing. So I said, have you considered there's some MVQ courses on cleaning? Um, cleaning, there's more to cleaning. There's a different substance for wooden floor, for plus this, 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 that, that, that. And I'm sure if you get a, if you develop yourself in this, it will be skills that you can really excel and that can take you places. And I said, I see more than this cleaning that you're doing. And she was from Zimbabwe at the time. And I said, uh -huh. have you thought about being a, a care assistant? Because she's very passionate about her journey, but she loves her yeah. cleaning. And I said, the cleaning is not giving you much, but combine it with being a care. So that's my mentoring. My mentoring is very practical. Um, it's more action-based. I will give you actions, things to do. And I want you to come and report back to me because just talking to you cannot change you. I want to make sure that what I'm saying you're putting into action, then you'll get my time. If you're somebody that just comes and there's nothing changing, I would not give you my time. Unfortunately, they have to be disciplined. To cut the long story short, the lady went into a care home as a carer. She noticed that the care, the cleaning person they had, they were not doing a thorough piece of work. She offered her skills um, she, and she had this MVQ cleaning. Now she, oh, she cleans about 12 care homes. She is a whole right. owner, who owns her own business. Mm -hmm. So right. that's what I mean about mentoring, taking people on a journey yeah. and walking with them and telling them about, get this training, formalize, put a business together. Whatever I see, I will walk with. But I always believe the best in people. 
there is something. She didn't need to retrain to go into a nine to five job because I knew she wasn't cut out. She's still a cleaner, but she's employing other people now. Wow, that's 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 a massive or very impressive story because um, it just shows that it's hard to improve when when you only have yourself to look up to. When you have someone else that can see, it. someone said that um, you can't see the picture when in the frame, but you need someone that has gone ahead of you and can actually see what you can't see. And um, that's interesting. The role mentoring or the difference that mentoring can uh, make in our lives. Um, because of the late start, we only have about three minutes to go. So I'm just going to ask uh, about one or two more questions and I'll let you go back to your ceremony. Um, so the question I'm going to ask you is, um, what do you want your legacy to be? Um, I mean, at the end, what do you want to be remembered for? Oh, I just want to be remembered for the woman that just believes the best in everyone and, and believes in passing the baton on that the empowering journey continues. It doesn't end with me. There are other people that can take on the baton, pass it on and strengthen the community that there's something people talk about the, um, you would know more in your, in your field. I don't know whether it's the human race. Yeah, where they say the top of the race is the white man. Okay. And the bottom of that race is the black woman. Second to the last is the black man. I want a world where there's no, no demarcation. We're all on the same level. We all have equal access to opportunities and we can flourish with whatever we want to do. Whatever anybody wants to do, if you want to be a painter, you can excel in it and be happy because there's somebody there that can empower you, support you, show you the way, where to go, and you never feel lonely. That's the legacy I'd like to leave behind. Thank you. Uh that's really, really, really heartwarming. I mean, just to know that you just want to remember that someone that will believe. I mean, I mean, many years from now, when you eventually lay to rest, and they put here and here lies Meredike, a lady who always believed in the best and put her best in others. I mean, it's something that you want to be remembered for, isn't it? And that's something that we all should aim for as well. Um, finally, any advice for young professionals out there? Because um, I mean, a lot of people are still in that phase. I mean, in the 20s and the 30s, and they're just like, um, I mean, I don't really know. I mean, I, I mean, the career, yes, but what what should I what should I make out of my life? What exactly is career success? What should I be aiming for? Um, as a closing question, what would you say? I think the first thing I would say is you're not alone. Everybody that started this journey started from somewhere, and sometimes in a place where they're not sure. But what you need to do is always seek for help, ask. Don't stay quiet. And there's so much information out there in social media platforms. Google is your best friend. You'll find so much help. But most importantly, I want you to dream big. I want you to believe in yourself and just do it. Just do it. From every experience you learn, some you win, some you fail, some you lose, some you will be successful, but every action you're learning something and you're being a better version of yourself. So just do it, go for it. Thank you. Wow, uh, thank you so much, Mrs. Moreni Kajayi. And um, thank you for the remarkable work that you're doing through Career Nuggets. If you want to find out more about Career Nuggets, um, visit careernuggets.tv. And um, also, I think um, you have a couple of books. Um, I think they're all named Career Nuggets, but they have like subtitles, isn't it? Um, like the one I have now is The Undeniable um, Secrets for Career Success. And yeah. I think there's another one that says um, Bite Size. Bite Size, yeah, just some nuggets, yeah. yes. Yes, yeah, so I'm not yet. So you can check that on Amazon. I, I actually started reading the book today. I finished it and I'm going to read it again and again. Well, thank um, you. But yeah, thank you so much for your time and thank you for adding value to us. Um, I yes. can't see that anyone has asked any questions, but some people obviously watch the replay. Um, and I, as I always like to close, till we meet again, make sure you keep living with passion and purpose. I will see you all later. Um, thank well you. Well, before you do you also. Time. Well done, Tunde, for what you're doing and empowering others. Love it. So keep on going. Thank you so much. Do the best. Thank you. Okay. All right. Bye. Thanks. All the best at your ceremony. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.